Hi, it's Professor Adam. Let's talk about the electronic spectroscopy of coordination compounds. When we probe the electronic structure of a coordination compound with UV, near UV, visible or near IR radiation, we are really probing the molecular orbital diagram. A ruby appears red because when it is irradiated with light, it absorbs green light due to the arrangement of electrons in its molecular orbital diagram. A color wheel indicates that when a color of light is absorbed, the opposite color is observed. So in the case of a green compound, such as this emerald, it means that red light is being absorbed. This table can be used to give the approximate wavelengths in the visible region of light that are absorbed so that when we know that when a compound appears red, it is going to be absorbing green light in the region 490 to 550 nanometers. UV-Vis near IR spectroscopy is really probing the frontier molecular orbital diagram or the valence electrons. Simple calculations can be done based on the wavelength observed as there is a relationship between the energy and the frequency observed. Before we go any further, the rules of spectroscopy need to be established. The first rule is that transitions between orbitals with the same parity or symmetry with respect to inversion are Laporte forbidden, which means that an electronic transition from one d orbital to another d orbital is technically forbidden because the d orbitals are symmetric with respect to inversion. P to P transitions are also forbidden because even if they are antisymmetric to inversion, they are both antisymmetric and therefore such transitions are technically forbidden. Since d orbitals are symmetric to inversion and p orbitals are antisymmetric to inversion, it means that d to p orbitals are allowed because the parity is different. Pi to pi star orbital transitions are also allowed. Transitions between different spin states or multiplicities are also forbidden. So the transition between a quartet A2 to a doublet A2 is forbidden because the number of unpaired electrons is different but a transition from a quartet A2 to a quartet T1 is allowed because the multiplicities or number of unpaired electrons are the same. But does forbidden really mean forbidden? Well, it turns out like most things in chemistry, there are alliances and exceptions. The strength of a transition as reflected in its molar extinction coefficient can be seen as a molar extinction coefficient will decrease when a transition is forbidden. If a transition is both symmetry and spin allied, it will be fully allied, resulting in an extinction coefficient which will range from 1000 to more than 100,000, like chlorophyll, which causes plants to be dark green due to fully allied transitions. Dyes and pigments are also good examples. Spin allied Laporte forbidden transitions have extinctions between 1 and 1000, 1 1, and it is the one, these ones which are very interesting and will tell us a lot about the electronic structure of a coordination compound. Aqueous copper solutions having deep blue colors are examples of these types of transitions. If a transition is both spin and Laporte forbidden, then the extinction coefficients are typically much less than one, which means that even if we make a concentrated solution, there is no color visible to our eye. It is very weakly absorbing. A pretty simple example is this titanium-3 plus complex, hexa-aqua titanium-3. Since water is a neutral ligand, it means that titanium has the plus 3 oxidation state, leaving 1d electron. It is an octahedral compound, meaning we can split the metal d orbitals into the metal ligand antibonding EG set, which is dxz squared and dx squared minus y squared. These are the acidic orbitals that lie along the ligand metal bond vectors and metal ligand bonding T2G set. From the angular overlap model, the separation between bonding and antibonding is 3 sigma. Looking at the absorption spectrum of hexa aqua titanium 3 plus, you get a broad absorption centered at about 500 nanometers. We can say that the absorption of a photon of light at 500 nanometers causes the movement of an electron from the T2G orbital up to the EG orbital, going from a lower energy orbital up to a high energy orbital, or the first excited state. The spin remains the same, which is part of the spin selection rules. The ground state term symbol on the left is doublet T2G because the multiplicity, which is the same as in NMR, is a doublet and the electron is in a T2G orbital. This is the simplest case as there is only one electron. For the same reason, the term symbol for the excited state is doublet EG. The energy of the transition can also be calculated. Because the transition we are probing at 500 nanometers is known, it can tell us what delta O is, which is about 2.5 eV when computed. 
Spectroscopically, this is about 20,000 wave numbers. Let's try another example, hexa aqua vanadium 3 plus. We still have six waters and a three plus charge on vanadium, which is in the fifth column, meaning that it is D2 with the same molecular orbital diagram as earlier. And the ground state configuration has two electrons in the T2G orbital, both of which are spin up due to Hunt's rule and the Pauli exclusion principle. In the absorption spectrum, there are two bands, which is probably unexpected because there's only one gap between the T2G and EG orbitals. There are other orbitals of higher energy, but that is not the cause of the two bands because they are too high in energy and those transitions would not be so close together. Or another option is maybe both electrons move up. Unfortunately, neither of these reasons are true because there is a third transition which is nearby at 250 nanometers. So there are three transitions for this hexa aqua vanadium 3 complex. Spectroscopy tells us that there are three different excited states at different energies. We have three absorptions. And so to tackle this problem, this multi-electron problem, a little more work is required. As not all electronic configurations are equal, but the multi-electron problem to discuss the, or to fix this problem will be discussed in a different video. The basis of solving this problem though is in crystal field theory, which we have a video on and it will be linked in the description below. Let's check comprehension. 